Auto Properties came into play in C Sharp 3. The intention of introducing Auto Properties was to allow code simplifications to make code more readable. At the same time, the way Auto Properties were implemented was confusing. Often we couldn't use them because of breaking immutability. I don't want to rant too much, so let's code a little bit and look at the problem on practice. For example, let's say I want to create a character class. Let's say that the character has some kind of armor. And by the way, that armor should be immutable. Once set, it should not be changed. Firstly, I'll implement it as an auto property. Well, this looks concise and understandable. We declared a property with getter and private setter, so no one can change the value of this property from the outside world. But there's a problem. Enemies do not walk only outside of the class. We as developers of this particular class are also enemies. We can easily roll out a method which mutates the value of the property. Immutability is the concept which became very popular nowadays because of the rise of a functional programming paradigm, which makes code more robust, at least. This course is not about different programming concepts, so let's continue to discuss c -sharp 6. So, in order to make this code immutable, we could declare a read-only field before c -sharp 6. Let's do it. As you can see, it won't compile, so I'll comment it out. Now everything works fine, but the thing is that we lost a succinct syntax. Imagine 10 properties, and you'll see that code looks ugly. Before c -sharp 6, this was the only one possible way to go to preserve immutability with properties. c -sharp 6 introduces immutable getter-only properties, so we can now refactor this code like this. Wow, cool, looks much better. And by the way, we need to remove our bad spell method. It also won't compile. This kind of property can be assigned only in a constructor or right here with the assignment operator. The straightforward initialization of properties was not available before c -sharp 6, so this is also a new feature and it is available with all sorts of properties. By the way, as you see you can initialize this property from both places simultaneously, but the thing is that the constructor will have a priority. Let's create a character and print out the armor value. I'll run the application. As you can see, the armor equals 90, so the constructor has a priority. OK, let's have a look at another neat feature called expression bodied members. To learn what name of is, let's start with an example right away. Let's look at the most often faced case when we need the name of operator. In WPF, in order to notify third parties about changes, we need to implement the iNotify property changed interface. Let's implement it on our character class. Here I implemented the INPC interface in a straightforward manner. 
Now I also want to roll out a new name property. If the name was changed, I want to throw a corresponding notification. To do it straightforward, we can pass a string literal like this. Such strings in the program are always bad. There is an implicit dependency between the string literal and the name of the property. What will happen if we rename the property? Yes, we will pass an incorrect string after that if we forget to rename it as well. There were several ways to avoid passing incorrect strings even before C Sharp 6 actually. I don't want to dig these approaches, just Google for color member name attribute and implementation of INPC with link queue expressions. You'll find what I'm talking about. C Sharp 6 provides a special keyword name of. Let's use it. Wow, pretty simple and beautiful. And by the way, with this operator, we avoid any performance penalties related to approaches with color member name and link queue expressions. So, this is cool. Remember that name of just takes the last part of a fully qualified name, so it doesn't include a namespace and a name of a class. Okay, let's look at a pretty simple and neat feature of importing static classes in the next lecture. In order to demonstrate a more convincing example, let's add a weapon class which has a name property. Let's also say that a character can be armed by a weapon. Now let's implement a static method outside of uh, the character class, which checks if a character is armed by knife. Before C Sharp 6 we could write the following check. It looks very excessive and ugly. In C Sharp 6 we can simplify this drastically. Here you can see the new operator question mark, which is also called safe navigation operator. The result looks much more concise and more readable. And one more thing, this is not only more readable, this is also more robust. Why? The thing is that in the previous example, the weapon property could be nulled right after this check and before this. So you could get a null reference exception in some cases, especially if we are talking about multi-threading scenarios. With safe navigation operators, this is impossible. Enjoy this new feature, it's very powerful. C Sharp 7 introduces a new feature called out variables. We have out parameters since the first version of C Sharp. Out variables is a syntactic sugar which makes all the things a little bit simpler. Let's look at an example. Let me introduce a new class point with two coordinates x and y.
Here I also have a method which returns coordinates via out parameters. How can we use such an API? Let's try to use it in the main method. With c -sharp 7 we can just remove the declaration of variables and write the returning type. c -sharp compiler will emit necessary code in compile time. This feature is also neat when we use try methods like try parse this is the most common case of using out parameters, so out variables are very handy in such cases. Here we just parse a string to an integer and print out the value. So, now out variables are fluid, we don't need to declare anything before calling a method which returns out parameters. But please notice that this feature doesn't make out parameters a good architecting choice. It doesn't mean that if you want to return several parameters, you should rely on out parameters. They are still most useful in try do something scenarios like try pass. I consider out parameters as a bad practice in most other cases. You can take my course about designing and implementing types in C -sharp to learn more on the topic. We had tuples at our disposal before C -sharp 7. They were introduced in .NET 4.0 and actually they were not related to c -sharp as a language itself. Old tuples were implemented as classes what reduced their applicability in high-performance scenarios. New tuples are implemented in a special type named ValueTuple which can be found in the NuGet package called System.ValueTuple. Value tuple is a structure and C -sharp 7 implements a special treatment of this type. Let's code a little bit. For example, I want to return two different error codes from a method. How could we achieve that before c -sharp 7? We could use out parameters, which are clunky. We could create a separate class or a structure to hold these error codes. We could use all tuples without comfort because we end up working with item 1, item 2, item 3 properties. Now we can implement such a function like this. At first I create a class. I launch a rocket and then check the state of main and subsystems and return them as a value tuple. 
Let's look at how we can consume such an API. Here you can see that we can use a var, so it looks like we get an anonymous type. Then we can use well-named parameters, very handy. If you remove names in the function declaration, then instead of using well-named returned parameters, you'll use item1, item2 and so on, names which will be automatically assigned to return values. I'll demonstrate it quickly. Of course, this is not very cool, so I'll turn it back. We consumed our tuple via the var keyword. There is a feature called deconstruction. Let's look at it. A deconstructing declaration is a syntax for splitting a tuple, or other value, into its parts and assigning those parts individually to fresh variables. We have four ways to deconstruct tuples. We can explicitly declare both type and name of variables, like this. We can use var instead of explicit type. We even can use var outside of round brackets. And finally we can deconstruct into already declared variables. Deconstruction is not just for tuples. Any type can be deconstructed. As long as it has a instance or extension, deconstructor method of the following form. The out parameters constitute the values that result from the deconstruction. It will be a common pattern to have constructors and deconstructors uh, be symmetric in this way. Just to notice, I want to add that uh, new value tuples are needed to use to create dictionaries with multiple keys. Here you can see an example on the screen. Value tuples implement the equality of structures, so they will be treated as equal if their corresponding fields are equal. In Visual Studio 2017, you can find all the navigation options under Edit go to menu item and here you can see different options available go to all go to file line symbol and so on let's try to use go to all i'll use the shortcut control plus t and here we see a popped up small window with different options for example i want to find character Visual Studio finds all the possible targets I might be interested in. It found a type, its constructor, a file and so on. On the top of the window there are filtering buttons which are helpful if you get too many results. 
If I want to search for a file, I can pick the corresponding option. Play around with other options, everything is very intuitive. Another navigation feature, which I like very much, is Find All References. I'll right-click on Armor and click on Find All References. A window popped up with a completely new experience. Here you can see that the property is used in three places. When you hover over these lines, Visual Studio shows a small preview window, which shows a chunk of corresponding code. Very cool! You can also group the searching results as you like. Here you can see different options. A simple yet very cool feature, which will save a great amount of time, is called Run to Click and it allows you to debug your code without setting breakpoint each time you need one. Let's try this feature. I'll set a breakpoint here at the beginning of the main method and run the application. Debugger hit the breakpoint and now I want to run here. I just move my mouse here and we see a green small button. Click on it and debugger is now here and we also see how much time it took to go here from the initial point and we can click on this metric and open the diagnostic tools with all the details. This is a very cool feature, I love it and I'm sure I'll use it on the everyday basis.